Scott, what a tremendous night at uh, Bellator London. Paul Daly's retirement, retired in, in the way that we all thought he would, with an with absolute vicious knockout. Mm -hmm. Fabian Edwards uh, cementing himself amongst the top middleweights in the world. Um, and then the uh, uh, interim title main event. What did you make of the, the whole card? Yeah, I mean, I think that the card really delivered. I thought that um, there were some amazing fights. Even on the undercard, there's some great fights, great submissions, great action. And I think the main card delivered. You know, the last fight, I think we kind of know it's going to be a wrestler versus a striker. And, and that's exactly what we got. In terms of what's next for Fabian Edwards, do you think it could be Austin Vanderford rematch? Yeah, you know what? It's something that, um, you know, we're going to go back, and, and I say this all the time, but, you know, to, to make a prediction on the next uh, fight, uh, we're going to go back and take a look at the, at the, at the film and watch it. And um, I know my guys are watching it back at home, and uh, we're going to decide maybe in the next week or so uh, what the next fights will be for Fabian. Scott, Paul Daly, he's been, he's been doing this thing for a few years, 64 professional MMA fights, mm -hmm. which is an incredible stat. How much has he meant to Bellator, and how much, or how, it, what regard do you hold him in, in terms of UK mixed martial arts and the development of the sport over here over the last decade or so? I mean, I, first of all, I don't, even know, I don't know what that sound is. But <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. Okay, yeah, me neither. But anyway, um, you know, here's the thing. When, when I think about Paul... He, it's, it, it's such a special relationship for me because, look, there's good times, there's bad times. He's a fighter, I'm a promoter. You know, it's like we're, we're sometimes at odds, but, you know, I, I really feel like in the history of martial arts fighting, MMA, he has delivered, uh, you know, over and over and over, and I have so much respect for him. I went to his locker room after. I said, you know, it's been such a pleasure promoting you over all these years. To me, he had one of the greatest fights in the history of MMA. It might be, to me, my favorite fight of all time, and that's him and, and Nick Diaz fighting Strike Force, uh, my old company. Uh, and uh, I'll never forget it. That was something that I was just like, wow. I thought Paul knocked him out. I thought it was over. And then, you know, Nick came back and went back and forth. And I think that it was just an amazing fight. So to me, he had one of the greatest, if not the greatest fight in the history of MMA. And, and when you look at his career, he has just delivered from, you know, time in and time out. So, you know, let's see what happens here. I was expecting him to leave his gloves in the cage. I didn't see it, you know, and my matchmaker, you know, some of our fight team saying, you know, he's already texting us trying to negotiate some deals, so we'll see what happens. I uh, wanted to get your view on the main event, strong wrestling performance from Logan Story, real good clash of styles. I want to get your view on, on MVP. Uh, he's had a long road mm -hmm. back from the Douglas Lima fight to get this opportunity for the title. Yeah. Just fell short tonight. Yep. What's the road ahead for him in Bellator? Yeah, you know what? I think that, uh, listen, he knew, he knew he was fighting a world-class wrestler. And then honestly, it's like I think Logan has some improvement to do myself too because you can't just lay on somebody and think you're going to win and score points because that's not MMA. That's wrestling. So to me, it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna wrestle, I think you have to continue the wrestling and you have to continue to either try to submit or ground and pound or strike. I mean, you know, there's there there's a difference between you know what you see on the wrestling mat and what you see in the cage. So to me, all these fighters, not just you know what you saw tonight, but I mean they're at the very highest level of what they do. But they owe it to themselves, they owe it to the audience, they owe it to the fans that they have to continue and get better at the disciplines that they're not strong in, right? And that's what I would tell Logan if he was here. Hey, you know, you're a great wrestler. Now it's time for you to become a great striker, a great submission fighter, and, and, and get your submission game together, you know? And, and, and it has to be more than just wrestle somebody. So um, that, that's, how, that's honestly how I feel. Hey, Scott. Uh, I was wondering how you scored the main event. It was a split decision for Logan Storley, but I wanted to get your take on how you scored it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I thought, you know, that uh, MVP won that fight. So, and, and the reason why I, f I say that, and, and, and to me, it's like I was talking to my guys back home, and they go, look, it's close, but we think MVP won. And I said, why do you say that? And they said, because half the round, he was striking. The other half, you can't just lay on somebody. You're not doing any damage. You're not getting closer to a submission. You're not creating any threat. You're just laying on somebody. And to me, that's, that's not MMA. And uh, obviously, the future of Amosov is unknown and understandably so. Uh, what do you consider? I mean, Logan just talked about Jason Jackson being a teammate of his, and you know he'd fight him if it comes down to that. Is that a, a viable option if Amosov isn't able to come back soon? Yeah, we're going to have a big fight for, um, uh, I think, Mr. Jackson here very soon. So we'll, let's see how that fight un unfolds and unwinds. And then we'll go from there. But uh, if they have to fight, you know, this is a business, right? If you're ranked number one, you're ranked number two, this, this you know, you got to fight them. And if not, um, I, we don't know when, um, you know, 
Amosov is going to come back because uh, obviously he's in the Ukraine and he's fighting in the war. It's very serious over there for him. And, uh, you know, I feel for him. It's, it's, a, it's just a bad situation. But when he's ready to come back and he wants to fight, you know, then he and Logan had a time when they lock horns. And so let's see if we can run that back. Scott, um, obviously one of the big stories tonight is Paul Daly uh, retiring. However, he came back to this press room and I asked him a question about what could possibly get him out of retirement. His uh, reply was seven figures. I already MVP know the answer. Rematch. Believe me, I already know the answer. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's something that we'll talk to Paul. If we can create something that's reasonable for everybody, then, you know, we'll, maybe we'll he'll fight again. But, uh, you know, when a fighter retires, they usually take their gloves off into the, into the cage and they leave them there and they have that moment. And I, I was waiting for it. I didn't see it. So maybe he has other plans. Yeah, of course, it was an insane atmosphere again in London, as always, when Bellator arrives. Uh, is there any chance we're going to get another London show this year um, back here at Wembley or possibly another area of London? Yeah, I think that um, that might be tough before the end of this year, but definitely maybe the beginning of next year. Uh, Scott, there, like you said earlier, there were some you know huge huge fights even on the undercard, um, probably the best one being Alfie Davis versus Tim Wilde. Uh, mm -hmm. Went to a majority draw... But it was an insanely good fight. Mm -hmm. What are the chances that we see the win bonus split between both fighters? Because as Alfie was saying earlier, he was mm. asking for it. He's got a kid coming in September. Mm -hmm. And both guys definitely, definitely earned it. Yeah, you know what? Um, you know, I, I don't mind having a conversation with his manager about that, but that's something that we'll, we'll handle internally. No problem. Scott, uh, just one more. I wanted to ask you just kind of to reflect on Paul Day's career. I know you're saying you're not sure if he's 100% going to hang them up, but right. just to, to reflect on his career and what he's done. Like I said, he's, uh, you know, he's been a special fighter for me personally, and he's done so many, you know, had so many great matchups. And one thing about Paul that you never have to worry about is he's always going to bring his game. He's always going to bring it. He's either going to, you know, fight to the end or he's going to come out throwing punches. I mean, he's, he's never out of the game, just like you saw today. I mean, he, you know, he was in a little bit of trouble getting submitted, I thought, for a couple of rounds. And then, you know, boom, 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 and lights go out. So Paul Daly is never, never out of a fight. And uh, that's, I think that's what he's brought to the table for the last 15 years is that, you know, you're fighting a guy that's very skilled and uh, can weather the storm and come back and knock people out. So that's why I think people really enjoy watching his fights because you never know what's going to happen. And uh, just back to the, the main event, interesting to hear... How you, how you scored that fight and how you saw it panning out. Mm -hmm. Does this mean that there's the potential for a rematch between these two? Do you feel that it was scored incorrectly? I mean, I think that, uh, listen, I don't want to be a judge. I'm just telling you, you know, what I, I was talking to my guys at home and they, they felt the same way I felt. It's like, look, you can't, you can't just lay on somebody and think that you're doing damage, right? You have to do damage in this sport. You have to, control is one thing, but you can't control somebody and just think that you're going to win the fight. You know, it's, it's, to me, it's like, you know, there, there's there's certain things that have to happen, and and uh, and just you know, wrestling alone is not going to be enough. Thanks for joining us, Scott. Okay, guys, thanks. Water. <laughs>